Sankana, good to see you again. These are our lockdown interviews, which we'll remember someday later also. <laughs> Hi, Rohit. Yeah, lovely to see you again on Zoom. <laughs> right, on Zoom. Um, I was just watching the trailer of Mumbai Diaries and uh, I watched it earlier as well. Um, I thought let's refresh just before I start the interview. Yeah. Um, you know, for people who have not seen the trailer, firstly, let's talk to them also. Um, yeah. You know, everyone knows 2611, like so I've covered it all three days outside the hotel. Uh, everybody has a story, either they knew someone. Is this a series that shows the devastation? Is this a series which is all action packed? Or what would you like to tell the audience at this stage? Um, you know, Rohit, this is a show which has used uh, the events of 2611 as a backdrop. Okay. So it is really our context. It is not, you know, like a documentary. It doesn't go into the hows and whys and all the details faithfully like that. Uh, it is a fictionalized account of 2611. But basically our show is a medical drama. It's a medical drama. It's set in Bombay General Hospital, which is a government hospital in Mumbai, where the, in our show we have shown the terrorists have entered at a certain point in the season, which actually had happened there, uh, entered, I think, yes. Kama. Kama. Uh, uh, yeah. And they were, of course, there for a brief period. We have extended it slightly uh, for dramatic purposes. And uh, so it's all unfolding in real time. So it is action packed. It is very dramatic. We are really looking at it, uh, you know, post COVID, I think we all have a newfound appreciation for our frontline workers, right. um, an awareness of the first responders and what they go through and their lives are not easy. I think in any case, in a government hospital, even in a big city like Mumbai, there are a lot of, uh, you know, things left to be desired. There's a shortage of beds and, you know, uh, of equipment, supplies, etc. It's not, it's not ideal at all. You know, uh, So it's the journey of the lives of these doctors, the nurses, the ward boys, the administrative staff, and, you know, their personal journeys, uh, of course, that they're going through, though we don't get into that in a lot of detail, sure. the patients over there, and then these events unfolding and how they are dealing, you know. So it's a medical drama thriller is how I would describe it. Okay, nice. And, and also for those who have seen the trailer now, it's evident that it's set in a hospital. It's a fictionalized version as well. But of course, a lot of these things did happen that we all are aware of. It also focuses on these three people who have just joined their first job and are uh, suddenly taken aback with these terrorists entering the hospital. Yes, it is also about that. Uh, we have three wonderful uh, young talents, Satyajit, Dube, Natasha, Murunmai, uh, who are playing our uh, interns. And uh, yeah, so for them, it's their first day. Uh, they have just joined and, you know, these things slowly unfold because, you know, we all, for example, wearing one costume throughout because it's from, the, I mean, it's over, uh, I don't exactly remember, but over those two, three days, you know, so that right. they're stuck in the hospital. Um, and, but it's also about, you know, Mohit Rana's character, who's, sure, the, yeah, yeah. Kodai, who's the head of uh, trauma surgery and what all they have to do because the OTs are not free and the things are not ready and so many patients coming in. One of the patients is a terrorist. I mean, it's just chaotic and, pan, you know, full pandemonium. Pr Prakash Velavadi is the uh, Dr. Subramaniam, who's the uh, chief of administration, chief of staff, I think, in the hospital. Uh, right. I'm playing the social services director in the hospital, uh, Chitra Das. She's right. not a doctor. Right. She's actually, um, she has a medical background, but she's not a doctor. But, okay. you know, on the day, in a time of crisis, everybody's going outside the line of duty to help others in need. So, um, I mean, it's all of that. Right, you know, you said this script was a page turner. What about it was so engrossing that you became a part of it as well? You know, I hadn't uh, done any web series before this. And I wanted to do something that I personally would have, you know, liked to have watched. So when, and I know Nikhil now for some years, uh, and I knew that he would do a good job of, you know, depicting those events with a certain dignity and respect, etc. that I was confident of. When the script came to me, it was so fat because it's a web series, right? So the eight episodes, you know, of whatever, an hour or so each, uh, that it was quite daunting. But, and I remember thinking, oh my God, that's a lot to read. And, but when I started reading it, because it's all unfolding in real time, I mean, the right. time camp, you know, so you're just like, oh my God, oh, this is happening. Oh shit, that is happening. Oh, now, you know, so it was like that when I was reading it. So I just thought that when it's a finished product with right. all the VFX and music and actors, whatever, you know, that, right. that I really, at least I could imagine that it would be very impactful. So even beyond that, oh, it was not like, this is a great character and this is mm. character drama and I'm going to get to explore. My, it was not that. It was just that it was such an engaging kind of a 
it felt like a very engaging series, you know. Right. So that's why I was like, yeah, let's do this. I mean, I think I would binge watch this. <laughs> right. Uh, sadly, twenty six eleven is our generation episode and uh, you know do you have a memory what does it recall it recalls so many things when it's told to people like us and so many others in the world uh, what is, what is your experience did you know someone where were you you know i was not in town uh, okay. at the time i think we had just driven outside of bombay okay. and uh, i moved to bombay in 2005 you know right so uh, this is 2008 right second and i remember we were out of town and we so the news was coming in actually very slowly like in the yes. sense you'd find out ye ho gaya hai then are this has also happened and mm-hmm. it was very confusing very frightening insecure time because you didn't know i mean you could didn't have a handle on the event you know yes, yes, it yes. went on for 3 days it was multiple locations you didn't know is it safe to come back to mumbai what, my friends family in mumbai what's happening so it was really um, very frightening at that time then we came back we drove back up for a few days and when we drove back there was <clears throat> there was such an uneasy stillness in the city actually yes yeah there was uh, i mean anybody you met it was like you are just seeing your own face because everybody that day was the same you were just everybody was in a state of shock and disbelief right. to this could have happened in mumbai um we were uh, and, and there was a general i i think a pall of gloom that was in the air and and then of course over the years <clears throat> months and years what found out about uh, people who were there on red accounts you encounter people where were you you hear these stories and it's part of our collective consciousness you know yes. it's something we have lived through it's something we have survived it's something we have moved on from but never had i imagined it from the point of view of the doctors right yeah yeah very interesting and the worlds which intersect you know in the, when you're looking at first responders whether it's the doctors nurses whether it's the police officers it's the media the patients who are there you know <laughs> i've never seen it from that point of view right and the and the medical staff is trained to save lives but they are not obviously trained for something like this exactly exactly how do you train people for this yeah absolutely absolutely uh, we didn't talk much about your character so coming to your character you know um, i we we get that you know also the last shot is very interesting where you are hiding and you know the terrorists are looking from the window um, could you tell us something more about your character so um, i am playing somebody called chitra das right <laughs> i said she's the social services director of this government hospital which is not an easy job in any case their jobs are not easy right and um she uh, is not a doctor herself and she's also somebody who's dealing with her own past traumas i right. mean she has her own baggage which you find out a little bit about in season 1 and hopefully more about that on se- in season 2 etc right. let's see uh so she actually unlike many of the characters that i have played in the past she's not somebody who's very strong or very typically strong to begin with you know right she is is plagued by self doubt and you know doesn't really know if she, you know if she can really uh, trust herself to be all that she wants to be but uh, i mean it's they are just you know they're regular people they're human beings they're not gods doctors are not gods and they need a certain support system to survive you know mm-hmm. and uh, but i think what it gives my character chitra das is a certain compassion towards others because of her own uh, frailties because of her own vulnerabilities she's able to she's always looking to heal others right. you know she's always looking to help others because in a way it's like she's maybe thinking she's helping herself right uh, but of course eventually through the season through the episodes we see that eventually she is somebody who is able to act with a lot of courage yeah right during gili puchi you told me your uh, procedure of prepping for a role it was i found it really interesting for this particular role in mumbai diaries uh, the prep was the mainly the script or did you get to meet some doctors would you did you did you want to do that so uh, i think in this you know what happens actually with research is that you don't always have to research equally for all uh, shows or all characters i find that you know when my uh, character is very removed from me um, mm. <clears throat> excuse me in terms of she's very remote from geographically culturally socially economically then i need to do a lot more research you know okay. for example in omkara you know she's a character in a rural setting she speaks in a uh, up dialect so naturally i have to do a lot more research i'm not used you know familiar with that but chitra das is not that remote from me okay the way okay. i am and she's mm-hmm. also not somebody who ever expected to go through these circumstances herself you know so you can't really prep for that what we did do in fact nikhil uh 
organized a fantastic thing, which really helped us. Of course, there were table reads, script readings, discussions, all of that, which was great. But we also did a medical workshop because as I said, okay. all of us are actors, but none of us are doctors. Right. <laughs> so it really uh, leveled the playing field for all of us. It was a great equalizer because some right. of us are more established and some of us are up and coming um, and everything in between. So it was new for all of us. So it was a great icebreaker because we did this workshop over a few days, all of us learning how to do sutures and jaldi jaldi wear gloves and you know the medical jargon and nobody's being able to do it properly you know so all of that was really great that helped us dr sheikh who trained us uh, is somebody who's actually there at the time okay, okay. of 26 11 and help you know working on this uh, on the scene so that uh, we got to hear his perspective as well and uh, that was very helpful i think for all of us Lovely. Uh, and that's just showing on that in the trailer as well. Uh, lastly, I want to ask you, you know, um, everybody's saying this is a great time for actors. It's a great time for content creators. What are these times like when, as, uh, when I talk about the number of offers you get, the number of scripts you get, Lou said this was this fat a script. How many do you end up reading? How many do you end up, you know, um, giving it a shot? Um, you're right, because I think in the lockdown, we could mainly write, uh, you know, and work on contracts, <laughs> you know, with the lawyers and, you know, all of that. But, uh, so I did read uh, a fair amount. I don't always read everything. It's not possible no. because <clears throat> everybody started working now. So everybody, right. you know, wants dates now. Uh, so sometimes I will read a synopsis. Okay. Try to get an understanding of what is this world? What is this character? Sometimes I'll meet the, uh, you know, director and try and understand what they want from me or what they mm. have in mind kind of a thing. And then, you know, one, because reading a series is, uh, you know, it's eight, 10 episodes and it's a lot of reading. So, and one has so many other things to do. So that itself actually is very time consuming. Right. Sometimes if a script is not well written, it's very difficult to read actually. Yes. It's not like a book, you know. So um, I did read some, I did meet people. I said no to a lot of things, uh, <laughs> but um, you know, I have come across some nice uh, projects to work on. Of course, it's too early to say. So that'll be announced as and when. <laughs> Great, everything that you've chosen so far, you know, you have managed to entertain us always. Uh, great uh, and best of luck for Mumbai Diaries as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.